Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over part one of a two-part series on IV fluids and osmosis. In this video, we'll cover the difference between intra- and extracellular fluid, and the movement of water by osmosis. In part two, we'll cover isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions in more depth. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Now, this is a topic that I definitely struggled with when first learning about it in nursing school, especially osmosis, so I'll really try to break things down in this video and make it nice and easy to follow. Trust me, don't worry if you don't fully get this topic the first time around. I've seen lots of students struggle, but they do eventually get it. So let's take a look at an individual cell in our body. What we have here is a single cell. On the inside of the cell, we have the nucleus and all the little organelles floating around in the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm of the cell is what we're interested in today. The cytoplasm is a fluid which is made up of mostly water and salts, like sodium and potassium. Water is represented by the blue dots here, and salt by the red dots. And on the outside of the cell, we also have fluid that is again mostly water and salts. To differentiate between them, let's write down their actual names. The fluid on the inside of the cell is known as the intracellular fluid. Intra meaning inside. And you can remember intra for inside. And the fluid on the outside is known as the extracellular fluid. Extra meaning outside. Next, it's really important to note that the intracellular and extracellular fluids like to keep a nice balance between each other. Especially with water, water really likes to stay at consistent concentrations. You can see that right now there's an equal concentration of water on the inside of the cell as on the outside of the cell. For every one unit of salt, there is one unit of water. But what happens if we start changing the concentration of water? For example, let's add a lot more water to the extracellular fluid without adding any more salt. Now for every one unit of salt in the extracellular fluid, there's more than one unit of water. This increases the water concentration outside of the cell. Now what happens to the cell when we do this? So we have our cell here again with a high water concentration in the extracellular fluid. You can see that the cell will react to the changes that are happening on the outside, in this case by swelling up with water. Remember, the water concentration likes to stay the same, so somehow the extra water on the outside is getting inside. This effectively makes the cell grow, and can actually cause it to burst if it grows too much. But how is this happening? How is this cell being affected by what's going on outside of it, in the extracellular fluid? Well, this is because the cell is not completely shut off from its outside environment. The cell has a protective outer membrane, but this membrane is known as a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable means that some substances, like water for example, can easily pass through it. So now we're really getting somewhere, because we can start to see how we might be able to manipulate our cell's internal environment, the intracellular fluid, by altering the extracellular fluid. Before we get into that, let's try to get a deeper understanding of what is actually causing the cell to either grow or shrink, because it can shrink too if we have the opposite scenario. So what we know is that the cell is either growing or shrinking based on how much water is entering or leaving the cell. And what we want to know now is how is that water deciding which way to move? The water is moving because of a process called osmosis. Osmosis can be defined as the movement of water from a higher water concentration to a lower water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. What exactly does that mean? Well, let's take a look at this example to help break that down. Say we have a container of water with a semi-permeable membrane down the center. So water is allowed to pass through this membrane from left to right or from right to left. At the moment, the water concentrations on both sides are balanced, so nothing happens. We can write water concentration by putting these square brackets around the word water. So here we have equal water concentration. Now let's see what happens when we add a bit of salt on the left side and a lot of salt on the right side. Now the concentration of water is no longer equal on both sides. Take a second here and think about what the water will do. Which direction do you think that it will flow? Remember that water moves from a high water concentration to a low water concentration. Okay, let's see how you did. So the left side has a low salt concentration because remember we just put a little bit of salt in. 
and the right side has a very high salt concentration. It's very salty. Osmosis always cares about the water concentration. So which side has a higher water concentration? Well, it's going to be the opposite of the salt, the left side. You can kind of think of it like this. The right side is now very salty and the left side is very watery. So on the left, where we have a higher water concentration, osmosis tells us that the water will move from the higher water concentration into the lower water concentration. So water moves from left to right until the concentration of water becomes equal on both sides. So overall, we end up with less total water on the left and more total water on the right, but the concentrations are now equal and that is osmosis. This process of osmosis is a passive process, and it's the same way that water moved in our example from the extracellular fluid into the intracellular fluid. It's because of the difference in water concentrations. One last thing for this video is just a trick to help remember how osmosis works. The trick is that water follows salt, especially sodium. So because the right side was super salty and water follows salt, water followed that salt into the right side until the concentration of water evened out. Okay, so again, if you're sitting in a test and you can't seem to remember exactly how osmosis works, at least remember the rule that water follows salt, and that might be able to get you the right answer. In the next video, we'll go through the different types of IV fluids using what we just learned about osmosis. We'll cover a trick to help you remember the specific IV fluids without having to memorize all of their names, and the different clinical uses for each fluid type. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.